Hello everyone, this is Dr. Kyle Allison. I hope everybody's doing well. The lecture this week is on the topic of global talent management. So in many aspects, human resources do tend to operate with similar principles from company to company around the globe. However, there are different types of talent acquisition or recruiting methods that can take place in different countries and in different organizations. In fact, even in the United States, if you've already been applying for jobs or at least know of others who have had several different jobs at different companies, they could probably tell you that their talent acquisition or recruiting process was different with some similarities between each company. Uh, it really depends on the scope of the company, the size of the company, and how aggressive they are in their recruiting and talent management techniques to acquire some of the best talent that they can obtain. Acquiring talent these days is much more competitive than it ever has been before. The job market is more competitive. You're seeing more individuals go to college, get higher degrees, and therefore the skill sets necessary uh, in the job market are very vast with technology, very technical skill sets, and so it's really those with those key skill sets that are going to thrive in today's global business climate. Tonight in this lecture, we're going to talk in detail about some of the pillars of global talent management, current challenges that we're seeing in global talent management, and where the next couple of years are going when it comes to talent acquisition and talent management. There are three pillars of global talent management. The first is the systematic identification of the key positions that differentially contribute to an organization's sustainable competitive advantage. So it's all about identifying what are the right jobs currently needed in your organization to make your company successful and thrive in the competitive environment. You know, there's many times where a company over indexes or over compensates for some of the jobs that they have in particular departments. They don't always understand the needs of certain areas to grow their business. For example, if a retailer right now is not as invested into e-commerce or online business as they should be, they're really lacking in the competitive environment because of the growth of e-commerce and what e-commerce is doing to the retail landscape. So they need, they need to understand they need to invest into resources and jobs in the right areas to be competitive and long-term competitive and sustainable in the e-commerce arena. So retailers now you're seeing in the retail industry are pivoting a lot of their jobs and talent resources over into e-commerce and areas to support the e-commerce business in order to keep up with the demand of that business channel. So in any industry, it's very important for a company to understand where they're going to invest into jobs and talent in the very first place. The second pillar is the development of a talent pool of high performing and high potential incumbents to fill those roles on a global scale. So now when you start talking about global jobs and a global talent network and companies that are global, you need to make sure you have very versatile and very uh, flexible employees who can adapt to the global changing needs of business today. We've spent a lot of time in this class so far talking about the complexity of global business and all the dynamics therein. Well, now it's time to talk about what it means to be a successful employee in global business today. You need to be flexible. Someone who can adapt to change, adapt to how they do their work, adapt to processes, because, because things will continue to change and evolve. Your job will not be set, will not be the same structure day to day. You really need to understand that you're going to be finding yourselves in a position, especially in a global business environment, where change is going to be somewhat constant. It may not be every day, every business quarter, every month, but just about every year or so, you're going to see some type of shift in the direction of your company and be able to adapt to that. The next is key communication skills. Now, communication skills have always been a key need for any business professional, but especially now as more companies find ways to become global, you need to be able to communicate with people from all walks of life, all diversity. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily mean you have to learn a foreign language or be bilingual. It just means you have to understand that your communication style uh, needs to be able to adapt to multiple types of individuals from all ages, ethnic backgrounds, social class, because nowadays you're going to be working with people in all varieties of, of, of class and also um, just demographics. Another key uh, 
you know, uh, skill set you need to have to be a global business professional is one that can understand and be strategic. Strategy is very important these days. You need to be someone who has to have a strategic mindset, always looking forward, always understanding how to be competitive, always understanding how to define ways to do business in a very unique fashion to be, to hold your company in a competitive advantage. Companies now are looking for global leaders who are very competitive, who can be very strategic. So having that strategy mindset and being able to be a, a successful strategic manager is very important in today's global business environment. Companies are going to look for individuals with those skill sets and more. And in general, it's very important for a talent management network, an HR network, to build that pool of candidates, to build that pool of talent within the organization. And it's very competitive. You know, the right individuals, the top candidates are going to have, you know, multiple choices nowadays with the amount of jobs at their fingertips. So, you know, it really depends on the scope of the job market, the global job market, but it really is into the 2000 late 2000s and 2018 going into 2020, going to be a very interesting dynamic to see uh, that it's a it's a candidate's world now, and the talent out there is very competitive. The third pillar of global talent management is the development of differentiated human resource architecture to facilitate the filling of positions with the best available incumbents and to ensure their continued commitment to the organization. So it's all about how HR is structured. How is the human resources within the organization not only recruiting new candidates and recruiting new employees, but also following up with them and building them an onboarding plan? You know, some companies will do a great job at recruiting individuals and getting them into the door. But then from there, there's a lack of training, a lack of oversight from HR to make sure that they're getting the right onboarding experience. A very successful company is one that has a great process not only getting the, the talent in there, recruiters only need to understand it's their job to follow up or have some type of liaison to get a employee onboarded into a company and make sure that their first, you know, 90 days are, are successful. And then within their first year, they have, you know, touch points of communication, understand how's the job going and making sure that they are settling into their new role well. This will make the employee feel that there's um, a way to be uh, helped if there's help needed or support from HR, but just an avenue to communicate any concerns or questions to ensure that the person's being as successful as possible. And HR can understand what they can do better to make the job uh, a transition and for the employee a way to learn the job even better. In organizations and companies today, there are five key factors that HR and talent management departments really need to take into account in today's global business environment when it comes to conducting global talent management. The first is alignment with strategy. The first question that needs to be answered is how do talent recruitment decisions sync up with the organizational strategy? This is important as a company is only as good as the people they are able to hire and retain to achieve these objectives. So to facilitate this, Hires are taken in order to help fulfill immediate business objectives and fulfill workforce deficit in order to fill in the skills gaps in the overall organization. It's very important for HR recruiters and talent management professionals to know what the goals of the organization are, to understand what the business challenges are, and to truly understand where the vision of the company is going. This can only help them find the right people that fit the company mission, company culture, and the jobs necessary to work towards those visions and goals. The more unsuccessful recruiters and talent management individuals are those who are not aligned with the organization. They may understand the needs of a particular job based on skill sets required, but they also need to understand that they need to find employees who embrace the company culture, that they, that they find employees that embrace the vision of the company. That's only going to help senior leadership and managers of employees have an easier time onboarding professionals that understand the mission and vision of a company. Too many times bad hires occur where there's not an alignment between recruiting and the hiring manager. It's definitely up to the hiring manager to clearly communicate with the recruiter that they need to find candidates that align with not only the company culture, but with where the company is going, where the skills gaps are. Jobs are usually open or open because of a, of a need in a particular area. New jobs are created because of skills that are necessary for a team or an organization 
to evolve to their future potential or to fulfill a need towards a business strategy. So at the end of the day, it is, again, very important for human resources and recruiters to align with the strategy of their hiring manager or hiring department. The second principle of global talent management is decision-taking consistency. The practices of the talent management department must make sense in the context of the rest of the organization. Factors like recruitment and development largely depend upon organizational needs, and the department must not attempt to experiment out of the context of the organization with core competencies, competencies like this. Investing in high potential interviewees incorporating grade payment structures and career management and etc are all affected by various factors when taking the decisions of the talent management team into account. So quite frankly, where does the talent management team fit into the organization? And at what point does recruiting and talent management make decisions in regards to the candidates um, worthiness and filtering for a job? Recruiters are the ones who need to filter for jobs. They only want to present the top candidates to a hiring manager for consideration. So where in that does the, does, does the decision making of the recruitment take place? There have been times where the right hire could have been passed up by the recruiter and the hiring manager never even got a chance to talk to that individual. Well, that's the decision making uh, right of the recruiter. And it's just part of what the negotiation between the recruiter and hiring manager is when it comes to decision making. But they must be consistent in their decision making. They must be able to always have alignment on what they're looking to achieve when it comes to their hiring processes. The third factor or principle of global talent management is cultural identity. While reaching objectives require efforts that depend on core competencies of the workforce, there is no substitute for lasting, meaningful success like company values, ideas, and identity. Assessing these factors is a key part in helping the workforce grow in size and qualitatively. Diverse professionals placed correctly under the right leadership can help take the organization to the next level with their practices and relationship. This is very important. We talked about it a couple of slides ago. Cultural identity of an organization is one of the key factors that are gonna make talent managers understand or recruiters understand whether a candidate is going to thrive or not. That this talent is going to really be able to come into the company, you know, drive change, drive leadership, but also be a part of the culture fit. Sometimes you could have the best candidate with the right skill sets, right background, but for some reason, they just don't fit in with the organization. They don't, they won't be able to work well with others or lead the teams, or they don't have a, a similar vision of where the company is going. That isn't always going to work out. You're going to have more issues with people who don't fit the culture identity of an organization if they don't align with the corporate values and mission of the company. Therefore, it's very important for global talent managers today to find and recruit individuals who do fit within the, within the context of corporate values and the mission. Also, it's very important in a global aspect that you find individuals who have a very worldly viewpoint or global viewpoint of the business and you know it fit within that cultural identity as well and it's good to have diversity in the workplace it's good to have different viewpoints and different ways of thinking to understand where to take the company forward in today's very global business environment you want people with different viewpoints different backgrounds to really bring to the table diverse viewpoints and discussion points so there's healthy you know healthy debate healthy discussion on what is the best approach take the company and business going forward. So again, very important in today's business environment. The fourth principle of global talent management is management involvement. While much of the upper management concerns itself with strategy and implementation, it has become imperative for high ranking C-suite or chief executives to contribute to talent management decisions to make their needs and opinions known. While it is the core responsibility of global talent management professionals, senior management influence these decisions regardless and should play a proactive role in selecting employees to share the responsibility.
some chief executives or senior leadership, you know, executives don't always want to be involved in all the decision making when it comes to hiring entry level employees or middle management type jobs. They have the trust there kind of directors or senior managers to fill those jobs. However, well, they don't necessarily always have to interview every single candidate at certain levels of positions. They need to at least express their opinions or ideas of what type of candidates they will they want their senior managers and directors to look for. Without that perspective or without that vision, you know, there could be a conflict of a hire if, let's say, for example, a manager hiring an entry-level employee doesn't understand the vision of a, a senior executive. If if all the ranks don't have an alignment on what the skill sets are needed, but also the vision for the, the employee is that there's going to be conflict within the ranks and also conflict within the team. Uh, because, you know, the, at the end of the day, the senior executives really do have a lot of you know power than organization to, to make organizational change and structure. So, that viewpoint and that uh, opinion of those senior executives are very important. And again, for example, there have been times in my career where I have seen employees, you know, come through an organization where the senior leadership didn't really have an involvement on, you know, what they were looking for in these entry level entry level employees. They just wanted people to come in and really just get the job done, but Again, what does that mean, though? It doesn't always mean you have to have the right technical skill sets. You have to have the right personal and professional skill sets. You know, what do you want out of your team? Do you want an agile team who's very flexible in nature? Or do you want a team that's very uh, structure-oriented and very process-oriented? Or, you know, do you want a team that's very um, diverse with thoughts and, and, and communication styles? Or do you want a very focused group that really operates the same way? And it's really up to the, uh, the leadership to implement that kind of atmosphere, that kind of culture. And again, when it comes to discussing organizational culture, it's up to the senior leadership to really implement that that uh, culture from the top down. A lot of influence comes from the top down. You know, entry level and middle management employees perceive themselves and how they look, uh, how they're being looked at upon by their senior leadership. So it's very important again to understand all those uh, dynamics when it comes to management involvement in talent recruit in recruiting and in talent management. The fifth principle of global talent management is brand identity in the job market. Any international market is a two-way street, and the nature in which companies value their hires shapes their identity in the international job market. And this must be a decision made by the organization to attract the professionals that they deem are right for them. Maintaining a coherent brand identity in terms of hiring policies and employee development will help from a consistent approach towards progress by starting out on the right foot. Company culture is all also, or excuse me, company identity from the outside. It's all about word of mouth. And a lot of it stems from how employees who've been hired or, in, or individuals who don't get hired and go through the interview process uh, speak about the company that they interviewed with. You know, it's very important for a brand identity of a company to have a strong reputation that's a place where individuals are going to want to work, that the employees are treated well, and it's a place for, for employees to look towards staying for long term. The company doesn't have that kind of identity of being a place that you can thrive at, work long term, and really be a place to be successful and where you're treated well. You're going to have a hard time finding candidates who want to work there. You're going to find people who just want a job for a job or don't have commitment are only going to work there for a short period of time until they find something else. You know, you want to be a company where people want to come into work every day. You know, not everybody's going to love their jobs, but at the end of the day, they're going to look at their job and their company and say, this is actually a place that's working for me. And every company is going to have turnover. Every company is going to have employees come and go. But when you go, when you work for a company where you see the vast majority of them have been there for a very long time, many years, and some actually retire from there, you know, it really says something about a company culture. It says something about how they treat their employees. And that's the kind of place where a lot of uh, you know, individuals now are trying to find their place to work. So talent managers and recruiters have a hard time now, um, you know, always trying to keep employees engaged in the interview process, especially if they're interviewing for multiple companies at once. 
if you're a top candidate with a lot of skill sets and being recruited by multiple companies, at the end of the day, it's not just going to come down to what the job is and money. It's also going to come down to if you know a lot about a company or not and what, what it's like to work there and if you're going to want to work there or not. You know, as a, as a candidate, you have the right to choose where you work. Um, once you make a commitment, though, and take a job, it's a little bit different story. But, you know, the enjoyment of looking for a job, uh, you know, whether you're employed or unemployed, is if you're able to get multiple uh, job interviews at once, you it's really on your favor. You really can, you know, evaluate each company. You know, obviously, some people need to get a job and just work to make money. But if you're in a place where you can be a little bit selective and kind of picky or where you want to work, take that opportunity to really evaluate you know, the company, read, read things on glassdoor.com or other websites that give employee evaluations of a company and reviews to really find yourself if that's where you want to work or not. And that is a challenge of talent management today is they know there's websites out there that talk about the reputation and brand identity of a company, but it's up to the recruiter to not just sell the job, but sell the brand identity too. talent managers must be the, be the ones at the front line of candidates to tell them, these are the reasons why you want to work here. Here's our company mission and value, and this is what the company can do for you. So a very interesting article that came out recently from hrtechnologist.com are three challenges of global talent going into 2020. So there are three challenges of global talent management kind of taking place now and into 2020. So what are the three biggest challenges with talent acquisition going into 2020? Well, we are in an era of machine learning, an era of understanding vast amounts of formerly invisible data to make better business decisions. This is what preparing for 2020 is all about, getting better data to make better decisions to see better outcomes. So these are the three biggest challenge, challenges talent acquisition professionals or talent managers face heading into 2020. First, legacy technologies need to be upgraded. Companies have a plethora of legacy technologies that need to be modernized to allow integration and enable an enablement of disruptive technologies like artificial intelligence. This will allow senior leaders to understand new data and make better decisions. So right now in a world of data and technology, not only are business decisions being made by data-driven insights, so is the HR processes and so is, you know, evaluating candidates, uh, Certain websites like ZipRecruiter.com or Indeed.com or certain websites where they provide or LinkedIn.com, you know, websites where they can take candidate profiles or professional profiles and kind of use an algorithm of an artificial intelligence to provide recruiters who they think the top candidates are is making it easier for a lot of companies to evaluate, you know, certain candidates for jobs. You know, it's very easy now to look at a LinkedIn profile and, and, and take the algorithm of LinkedIn and they'll, they'll populate for recruiters, you know, a handful of candidates based on, you know, their background, what they input into their profile and some of the skill sets that they match and just put that into like an artificial intelligence uh, system, use that data and, and give results to recruiters now on who they can look at as candidates. That's a great thing, but it's also a challenge for some Companies who can't invest yet into big data are those types of systems that provide those algorithms. So they will work with third parties like LinkedIn or Indeed or Glassdoor to find those candidates, ones that will uh, upload their profiles and give them uh, results. The second challenge of global talent acquisition groups or um, recruiters these days is that 100% of talent acquisition roles are changing. So there's critical need to upskill the, the talent acquisition function. With artificial intelligence or AI, what was formerly invisible data is becoming available for talent acquisition or talent management professionals. This means they will be expected to do their work faster and have the necessary skills to leverage the insights of AI-enabled technology. Cognitive systems will be able to participate in and even lead the effort of common TA functions like sourcing, recruiting, and interviewing. So once was the day where recruiters did it all. They interviewed, they sourced candidates, they recruited individuals, they cold called candidates, or they reached out. They had to do a lot of their own kind of, you know, uh, skill set uh, algorithm on their own of how they identify candidates. You know, a lot of it was just matching profiles with job, the job opening or job description, which is still something a lot of 
talent acquisition or talent managers do today. They're going to take a candidate profile or have a candidate fill out a candidate profile and application and then read it or resume and match it up against the job description. Well, nowadays, you don't even need to use a resume or, you know, look at resume by resume and just let the algorithm of the artificial intelligence do it for you. Read through their resumes or pick out keywords from resumes and put it together in some type of algorithm output of information that gives you a list of candidates. So, again, it's finding those talent acquisition professionals who can use that data and synthesize it and make sound hiring and recruitment decisions based on that artificial intelligence. The third challenge of global talent, global talent management today is the upcoming high tech skills gap will be something companies need to keep an eye on as 2020 approaches. As we know, we are in a very competitive environment. By 2020 in the United States alone, we will have 1 million more software technology jobs. With every company becoming a technology company in some way, there is not enough talent to fill those needs. Companies need to ensure they offer first-rate personalized experiences for candidates, as well as enhance the way they build relationships with top talent who will have many choices for their next employer. So again, technology is changing. Not only how talent management and talent acquisition and recruiters conduct their job, but there's also a lot of jobs out there that need highly skilled, technical sav technologically savvy individuals to fill a lot of jobs these days. So it's very important for talent managers and recruiters to establish relationships with these individuals and really find ways to not just sell the job, but sell their company to acquire top talent. I thank you for your time tonight into reviewing this uh, presentation on global talent management. I hope you learned quite a bit. I wish you a great week and we will speak to you soon.